Welcome to the podcast, Characterizing Abnormal Neural Networks in Dogs with Anxiety. I'm Brenda, and I'm excited to explore this intriguing topic with you. Anxiety is a common mental health issue in dogs, and understanding how it affects their neural networks can be crucial in helping these animals lead happier, healthier lives. In this episode, we'll dive into the latest research on the subject and discuss how scientists are trying to characterize abnormal neural networks in dogs with anxiety. So, if you're a dog lover and want to learn more about the mental health of our furry friends, keep listening. Researchers at Ghent University in Belgium report abnormalities in functional neural networks of dogs diagnosed with anxiety. Led by Yang Feng Shu, a Ghent Experimental Psychiatry Lab, GHEP, or SAMI, and Emma Christian, a Medical Image and Signal Processing, Medisip, the study shows that compared with healthy dogs, those with anxiety exhibit stronger connections between the amygdala and other regions of the anxiety network. Published in PLOS 1 on March 15, the findings might also help reveal how functional connections between anxiety-related regions of the brain are altered in cases of human anxiety disorders. Animal models of anxiety are an important tool for studying anxiety disorders, and results can benefit both veterinary and human medicine. However, the many different aspects of anxiety cannot all be studied effectively in the same animal model. While rodents are often studied, this new study takes advantage of the larger brains and bigger cortex found in dogs to characterize neural networks associated with anxiety. 25 healthy and 13 anxious dogs were volunteered by their owners and examined via non-invasive functional MRI, or fMRI. The dogs were treated in accordance with all necessary welfare guidelines, ensuring that they suffered no negative consequences of the study. The researchers studied the resting state of dogs with and without anxiety, comparing network metrics and connectivity between groups, and determining their associations with anxiety symptoms. Resting state fMRI indicated that functional connections between the amygdala and other parts of the anxiety circuit, particularly the hippocampus, were stronger than normal in anxious dogs. Within the anxiety circuit, network metrics including global and local efficiency were higher in the amygdala of anxious dogs. Dogs which exhibited fear and anxiety towards strangers, as well as excitability, were more likely to have brains showing abnormal network metrics in the amygdala. The researchers believe their findings show that resting state fMRI is a good tool for studying dog models of anxiety, and that future studies like this could increase our understanding of how anxiety-related circuitry in the brain is altered in anxiety-disordered animals, and possibly even humans with the condition. The authors add, in this manuscript, we constructed functional brain networks using graph theory metrics to compare the differences between anxious and healthy dog groups. Our findings could provide more insight into the topological organization of the functional brain connectum and anxiety disorder, thus lead to a better understanding of the pathophysiological mechanisms and illness cause of anxiety in both animals and humans and help the development of more personalized and effective therapies. In conclusion, this study sheds light on the functional neural networks associated with anxiety in dogs, revealing stronger connections between the amygdala and other regions of the anxiety network in dogs with anxiety compared to healthy dogs. This research not only benefits veterinary medicine but can also help to uncover how functional connections between anxiety-related regions of the brain are altered in cases of human anxiety disorders. By using resting state fMRI, this study highlights the importance of this tool for studying anxiety in dog models and how it can increase our understanding of anxiety-related circuitry in the brain. We look forward to future studies building on these findings to develop more personalized and effective therapies for both animals and humans. Thank you for listening and we invite you to stay tuned for more exciting topics on our upcoming podcasts.